Good evening in tonight's news. Fears in Newport of a sabotage attempt on Australia 2. A man charged in Sydney over the abduction of a two-month-old baby. And in sport, Parramatta makes it three years in a row as it takes out the Sydney Rugby League Premiership with a convincing win over Manly. There's renewed controversy in Newport over the Liberty Syndicate's plans to make further modifications to the America's Cup defender. After today's race was cancelled because of shifting winds, the Americans opted for a lay day and announced they'd be making more changes to Liberty before Tuesday's race. The Australians, meanwhile, are apparently concerned that someone may try to interfere with Australia too. Syndicate head Alan Bond confirmed today that a string of plastic bags had been found across the entrance to Australia 2's dock earlier this week and that there'd been another incident involving a scuba diver near the yacht. Paul Marshall reports. That 12 metre is the best 12 metre in the world. It is the best 12 metre in Newport. And if we don't win it, it will be a human factor that's caused it. Australia is under constant guard throughout the night by security men and the crew from Challenge who work in shifts. Phil Morgan was one of the crewmen on watch last night. Um, it's about one o'clock in the morning and uh, I was sitting on the deck of Australia 2. I heard the chief of the guards, a guy called Chuck, yell out, quick, get down under the box. There's a diver in the water. You know, people, if they've got nothing to hide, walk in the front door, they don't come out of the water with a frog suit on. I went down, we opened the box to the keel to make sure that nobody was getting in there to do any damage or take unwanted photographs. He didn't get any closer than probably 50 yards from, from the Australia 2. The guards are back on duty tonight. The Australians are convinced that this boat can win the America's Cup and they're not taking any chances with her. All the argument and controversy will be put aside on Tuesday morning when another attempt will be made to start what's now being billed as the race of the century. This morning's cancellation was a cruel one for Australia too, as she'd completely taken control of the pre-start manoeuvres. Liberty went out this morning lighter than she had been for any of the other races. The Americans had remeasured and taken lead out of the boat to try to make her faster in light weather. But the Australians weren't worried and were in high spirits before going out. The Australians wouldn't stay happy for long. The 10-minute gun was fired on schedule at 12 o'clock. The two boats began manoeuvring for the start. This has been Australia's weakness, but John Bertrand and his crew spent yesterday practising starting tactics, and it paid off. They got the better of Liberty and were forcing her over the line with about a minute to go when the race committee signalled a postponement. The wind had shifted and the course had to be reset. If the race had started, Australia would probably have had a lead of around one minute. As it turned out, yeah, it was an excellent start. They had, if they hadn't cancelled the race, the uh, Liberty would have been over the line, or she certainly was over the line, and it would have taken her at least a minute to get back. So that would have been a, a minute clear start to Australia which um, is nice to see. So what did you think when they postponed the race? Well, obviously the breeze had uh, shifted a long way to the right. Um, that was partly responsible for why Liberty was in so much trouble at the start. And, uh, you know, on those grounds, that, that's perfectly good reason to postpone the race. Officials in the United Arab Emirates have recovered the flight recorders from the Gulf Air jet which crashed yesterday, killing all 111 people on board. American experts from the Boeing company are due in Abu Dhabi tomorrow to investigate the crash which occurred during a routine flight from Karachi to Bahrain. The Boeing 737 was on a regular flight from Karachi to Bahrain when it crashed near Abu Dhabi. Technical teams have been inspecting the crash site about 30 miles from Abu Dhabi airport. So far, no reason has been given, but the airliner's so-called black box flight recorder is believed to have been recovered. 
The two engines disintegrated, but the tail section and part of the fuselage was found intact. The rest of the wreckage was strewn over a wide area. Immediately after the crash, Gulf Air dispatched a 12-member team of specialists led by the airline's chief executive to inspect the debris and to try to determine the cause of the tragedy. All 111 people on board the airliner were killed. Most were from Pakistan, but there were nine Britons, including two stewardesses, the Omani pilot, an American and an Iranian. Special teams from Dubai and Abu Dhabi have had the grim task of removing the bodies. Most have been charred beyond recognition, making the task of identification almost impossible. Air traffic controllers in several Gulf states reported receiving a distress call from the plane just before it hit the ground. Eyewitnesses say they saw the aircraft lose height, adding there was a loud noise or explosion just before it crashed. A Bulgarian trade official has been arrested in New York and charged with trying to buy highly sensitive U.S. nuclear secrets. 41-year-old Penny Kostadinov was arrested outside a New York restaurant and could face the death sentence if he's convicted. 41-year-old Penny Kostadinov was arrested in New York last night after allegedly receiving highly classified documents concerning American nuclear secrets. Kostadinov, flanked here by FBI agents, was taken to the Federal Detention Center and booked on spy charges, stemming from a year-long investigation. The FBI acted on information from an unnamed American graduate student who had befriended the Bulgarian. For four years, Kostadinov lived here on Manhattan's Upper East Side with his wife and two children. I'm not scared because I know that he is not guilty. Since 1979, Kostadinov worked for the Bulgarian commercial office as a trade official. According to the U.S. State Department, he is not protected by diplomatic immunity. Arraigned today in federal district court, Kostadinov was represented by an attorney hired by the Bulgarian government. Kostadinov is being held without bail for allegedly endangering American security. A European effort to arrange a ceasefire in Lebanon has apparently gathered support following visit to, a visit to Paris by representatives of Lebanon and Saudi Arabia. France, Britain and Italy who have troops in the multinational peacekeeping force in Beirut are reported to be trying to secure a ceasefire monitored by the United Nations. They proposed a ceasefire in the Shuf Mountains, the installation of UN observers and the assignment of a UN peacekeeping force to southern Lebanon. The Arab League has also been active in trying to effect a ceasefire. Lebanon is reported to have agreed to a summit meeting between Saudi Arabia and Syria in an effort to end the latest heavy fighting. An explosion at a beauty pageant south of Manila has killed at least 13 people and injured an unknown number of others. Police say the blast occurred as the winner of the pageant was announced in Davao City, about 1,000 kilometres southeast of the capital. Meanwhile, in Manila, the police and the military conducted random checks for guns, explosives and other weapons as an uneasy calm settled over the city following the most recent demonstrations. You're watching Australian Capital News. After this break, Sydney police arrest a man after the kidnap of a two-month-old baby. You're in the Marine. Marie Ryan of Blacktown. You're a winner. Albert Partridge of Guildford. If you always thought you'd never be the one. Play Winners Bingo each day in the sun. Play Winners Bingo and you could join the winners. $5,000 to be won every week in the sun, plus $2,000 in the Sun Herald. Well, I didn't think I would ever win. You're in the money. You're a winner in the sun. Winners Bingo starts tomorrow in the sun. Help, puppy food. You can't give your dog a better start in life. I've been breeding dogs for almost 20 years, so I'm delighted about this new pal puppy food. It's a complete and balanced diet for pups with calcium and phosphorus for bone development, plus extra protein, vitamins and minerals. I certainly would recommend it to anybody that wants a happy, healthy puppy. Pal puppy food, you can't give your dog a better start in life. The Decoration Centre celebrates spring with fantastic discounts on all stocks of wallpapers, pants and fabrics. For two weeks only, Pottage Collections, One and Two Design Connection, All Mayfair Collections, Wilson Spring Song Collection and wallpapers by Molimex and Lifestyle are all discounted a magnificent 30% and in some cases 40% off mark prices. Also, all Torpens paints are 30% off. Sale ends October the 1st at the Decoration Centre, 45 Townsend Street, Phillip and 4 Wheaton Close, Belconnen. For doobers, watches and thingamabobs, BBC's got them all in here. It's easy as BBC. BBC. 
It's bathroom fashion in the thingamajig catalog sale. Coroma Domus towel ring nine seventy five, toilet roll holder seven ninety five, mirror twenty nine ninety five. Coroma gold vintage vanity basin set only one hundred and twelve dollars. Acronite nine hundred millimeter Opus vanity unit just two seventy dollars. And what's his name's galore? Come on, it's BBC. A 21-year-old man will appear in court in Sydney tomorrow, charged with the abduction of two-month-old Stephen Wills outside a suburban supermarket on Friday. The baby is now recovering in the Royal Children's Hospital after being found abandoned yesterday afternoon. Stephen's abduction from the front of Jules' food store touched off a huge police search for a man seen running towards Marrickville Railway Station with the baby in his arms. But soon afterwards, the trail ran out. Despite widespread public interest, it wasn't until yesterday afternoon that detectives received their first real break. A landlord checking his property in Alice Street, Newtown, saw the baby and his abductor in this derelict house next door. In a fight which followed, the landlord was knocked unconscious and the wanted man escaped with the baby. Later, two boys playing near this deserted property in Charles Street, Erskineville, saw Stephen lying abandoned inside. They called for help and he was taken to the Royal Children's Hospital in Camperdown. There to meet him was a very relieved mother, Karen Pierce. Isn't that relief? I can just cry now. I'm so, so happy. Last night, police went to a house in Leichhardt and arrested a 21-year-old invalid pensioner. In the meantime, Stephen's being treated in hospital for dehydration. He's expected to stay there for the next few days. The Australian Council for Overseas Aid says it will disregard a recent parliamentary report on East Timor. The council says it believes the report, prepared by a committee under the chairmanship of Bill Morrison, is already out of date and that its recommendations are invalid. ACFOA is the body that coordinates the aid activities of about 60 non-government Australian agencies and is responsible for the distribution of about $40 million per annum. Over the weekend, they've been holding their annual council meeting, which makes decisions on policy matters, as well as the administration of private aid for overseas countries. East Timor and Vietnam have both figured prominently in discussions, with the council making it clear that its decisions about who is to receive aid won't be influenced by the federal government's views. The council believes the flare-up in fighting in East Timor between Fretlan and Indonesian forces over the last few weeks proves the majority report of the parliamentary delegation which recently visited the area is wrong in several important respects. Rail fares in New South Wales rose by 12% today. The rises follow a freeze on fares since last July, but State Rail Authority Chief David Hill says fares in New South Wales still compare favourably with those in other states. Mr Hill says fares have risen by 65% since 1976, while the Consumer Price Index has risen by 99% and average weekly earnings have risen by nearly 110%. The future of the National Film Archives is still not known, despite the assurance from the Prime Minister, Mr Hawke, last night that funds would be made available to protect Australia's film heritage. The Acting Director General of the National Library, Mr Brian Yates, said today he'd not been given any details of what the government is proposing to do with the archives. The library estimates it needs more than a million dollars for film preservation work, but there have been repeated suggestions that the archive will be removed from the library's control. A young Army Reserve soldier on commando training collapsed and died during a 15-kilometre run at the Ingleburn Army Base in Sydney's southwest today. 22-year-old Private Sean Patrick Ryan, a university student from Pennant Hills, collapsed about 800 metres from the finish mark. Other runners and a medical officer from an accompanying ambulance attempted to revive him, but he was pronounced dead shortly after. A fish week trader has decided to remain open on Sundays despite a warning from the Department of Territories that he's acting illegally. The manager of Glen Powell Used Furniture is facing thousands of dollars in fines, but he believes the existing laws on trading hours contain a loophole. Shopping at the store was going on at a brisk pace today and the management remained undaunted even after two government inspectors told them they were breaking the law by trading. Manager Glenn Powell says if he can't remain open after midday on Saturdays, he'll have to sack four staff. But he's received legal advice that what he's doing is perfectly acceptable and he's prepared to go to court if necessary. I'm allowed to sell goods in the decoration, renovation of a domestic premises. I define a land suite as decoration. 
Counting continued today to determine the results of the Queen Bean and Goulburn Council elections. In many other parts of the region, counting for New South Wales Shire and local government elections was completed last night. There were few changes. In Yash, Shire, uh, Shire President Ellis Butt retained his seat after it looked like losing it in early counting. And a man was killed after being hit by a car near Jindabyne at 2 o'clock this morning. Police say the man, who hasn't yet been positively identified, appeared to leap out at the car. Well, that's the latest news after this break in Australian Capital News. Tony Campbell back with a report on Parramatta's big win in the New South Wales Rugby League Grand Final. Mini Baby Bell, the well-rounded cheese you'll have a ball with. Cutting and styling hair is part of my life. I really love it and I feel it. I like to create an exciting new look for every client that comes to me. If you know what it means to have simply beautiful hair, then you know how it feels. Soft, shiny, bouncy and full. One word says it all. Sun soaked. And there's a Sun Silk shampoo and a Sun Silk conditioner for you. Whatever your hair type, Sun Silk for simply beautiful hair. Nobody looks at office automation quite like Wang. Other computer companies see the pieces to the puzzle. Data processing, word processing, personal computing. But Wang looks at how all the pieces fit together and gives you one solution that fits everyone's needs. A total solution other computer companies can't match. Bringing everything in your office closer together is what puts Wang way ahead. Roll them up, roll them up. Hey, how come you only use me for withdrawals? What about all those other things, like depositing, paying off your bank card, transferring money from one account to another, or finding out your balance? I can do all that in seconds. Seven days a week. When you get to know your handy bank, banking becomes so much faster and easier. And at Westpac, we're rolling our sleeves up to make it easier still. There are so many things you can do. Hey, aren't you going to introduce me? When you get to know your handy bank. Good evening. In the grand final of the Winfield Cup competition played at the Sydney Cricket Ground this afternoon before a crowd of over 40,000 spectators, Parramatta played sensationally to beat Manly by 18 points to 6 after leading 12 nil at half time. The Eels took a strong grip on the grand final in the opening minutes after tries by Brett Kenny and Eric Groth and went on to win their third straight premiership. Played back for Ray Brown to switch the point of the attack to the open side to Sixworth. Now to McCabe. McCabe got a pass away. It was what? Oh, Kenny. Kenny's got Lydiard with him. Lydiard's off. Turns the back inside. Picked up by Kenny. Kenny is over. That's the first try of the grand final. There's a punch up in centre field between Mayers and Sigsworth. And Peter Wynn goes the blind. Turns it back to Cronin. Cronin inside to Edge. Edge inside to Kenny. Kenny outside to Ella. Ella to Grace. Grace is flying. Grace going very hard. That's a try. Taylor. Good. Good. Gets rid of Gerard. Pops it down to Sharp. A quick switch of the ball out to Cronin. Cronin to Mayers. Mayers is galloping towards the corner. The pass has gone to Ella. It's gone to ground, and Mayers, I think, has got it for Parramatta. Played by Schubert back to Rebo. Given to Thompson. Long ball out to Sigsworth. The Manly stretches onto the right. Here's Edie. Edie gets between the ringer and the centre. Flick passes to Bosted. Quick ball to Sixworth. Even quicker to McCabe. He's going down inside Parramatta's territory. And he's tackled about 25 metres out. Got it back to Thompson. Thompson to Close. Close gets the pass back to Cleo. 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 Oh, Price was back there to put the shoulder in. Tackle number five. Sterling's the player to watch. No Mayers is going to put up the bomb. I tell you what, it's a good bomb. Plenty of pressure here. Oh, it's going to be a try. Kenny has scored. Rod gives it to Brown. Brown floats it out for Sixworth. Sixworth's going to score for Manly. Paddington Hill corner. So, commiserations to the Manly supporters tonight and congratulations to Parramatta. 30 people were arrested during yesterday's VFL Grand Final, but there was at least one policeman at the ground who had nothing to do with the arrests. He was Senior Sergeant Alan Jeans, who coached the Hawks to their record-breaking win. It's the greatest trophy in Australian football, and last night, the VFL Premiership Cup certainly did the rounds. It was hugged, 
It was repeatedly filled with champagne. It was thrust aloft to the delight of the fans. And Michael Byrne used it as the crowning moment of his football career. Hawthorne's fifth premiership celebrations might have been a little low key, but there again, that's Hawthorne's way. There was no formal dinner. But drinks at the Hilton Hotel for about 400 gave the players and officials a chance to let down after the game. It really was a great win. It was just one of those, one of those amazing things that uh, everything went right in the day and it was just a great victory. Mrs Yabby, what was the feeling like? You picked a good side, that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I like this lipstick here. <laughs> the winning part, it's not mine either. Did you do that a bit easier than back in 1966 much, when there was only one kick in it? Yes, much, much easier. It was beautiful. Still on Australian football and the preliminary final of the South Australian National Football League was played this afternoon between Sturt and Norwood. Sturt ran out winners by 44 points over Norwood. The scores, uh, Norwood, at least Norwood ran out winners, 23-8, uh, 146 to 15-12, 102. Sturt now play West Adelaide in the grand final next week. So that should be a top game in the South Australian League. On to soccer and the Canberra Arrows recorded a win over Leichhardt in a fiery game at the Bruce Stadium last night. The Arrows goal came in the 19th minute when Ian Gibson hit a free kick low from the right corner and Terry Byrne knocked it home from the inside the six-yard box. Here are some highlights of last night's action. Stoppelis getting a touch. Brennan across to Farina. And Parks just got to the ball before the advancing Farina then. Gibson chips the corner inside. And Bobby Parks takes it well. Quickly taken goal kick, Andrew Young. Jimmy Murray. Gibson. Gibson coming inside, making room for himself. Tries one. From some 35 metres. Free kick going to Canberra. Good ball from Terry Byrne. Jimmy Murray underneath it. Does well to stay with the ball. Gibson. Gibson will try and chip this in. Terry Byrne is making a run. Good ball. And Terry Byrne was there. Gibson chipped that ball in. Terry Byrne goes to them and posted goal number one for the Arrows. And the results of other National Soccer League matches played today. Wollongong and Sydney Olympic played a three-all draw. St George won, Footscray nil. Newcastle two beat Brisbane Lions one. Marconi and Brisbane City played a nil-all draw. Heidelberg four, Adelaide City two. And South Melbourne one beat West Adelaide nil. The Ampol Soccer Cup final was played this afternoon at the Deakin Oval between Juventus and Croatia Deakin. It was a very close battle for the entire match, with Juventus running out winners in the last three minutes of the match to take the full-time score to five goals to four. Croatia held the lead after the first half four goals to three, but tied in the last ten minutes, allowing Juventus to creep in with the winning goal. And the National Soccer under-14 championships got underway today in Brisbane and the results of those matches, New South Wales 4 beat the ACT 1, Victoria 4, Northern Territory 0, New South Wales and Queensland played a one-all draw, West Australia 2 beat South Australia 0. On a motor racing and Italian Elio De Angelis has won pole position for the European Formula 1 Grand Prix, which, which we've shown on Capital 7 tonight. That starts at half past 11. In the final practice session, the Italian took his Lotus around the 4.21 kilometre hillside circuit in 1 minute 12.92 seconds. Another Italian, Riccardo Petrezzi, starts in second position and Britain's Nigel Mansell will start third. Alain Prost of France, who holds a slender lead in the World Drivers' Championship, was relegated to the fourth row in his Renault. The One Day Nations Grand Prix Cycling Classic will uh, be decided tomorrow in the French Riviera Resort of Cannes. 19 riders from 11 nations will compete, including Alan Piper of Australia, but defending champion Bernard Ino of France has been sidelined because of painful tendonitis in his right knee. And finally in sport tonight, Australia has beaten India 2-1 to level the Asanda Four Test International Hockey Series at 2-2 that was played in Perth today. But the home side had to come from behind to win the match after trailing 0-1 at half-time. That's today in sport. Joe Bradshaw has the weather details coming up next. $12 fan addresses. It's on now. Grace Brothers Wild. What a price, what a bargain. On right now, sensational $12 value on ladies' border print banner dresses. 
What a price. Shirt makers and sleeveless styles in easy care fabrics. The brightest summer prints and colors. $12 border print dresses. What a bargain. What a time to save with these $3 kids wear values. Price lovers, wow. What a price, what a bargain. $3 girls t-shirts and terry tanning shorts. Boys t-shirts and action print shorts. Plus amazing $2 value on Bonds t-shirts. And we're a crazy 50% off superseded Tusker herringbone luggage. Suitcases, overnights, and airbus styles from just eighteen fifty. Fifty percent off the entire Tosca herringbone range. It's on now. Grace Brothers, wow! What a price! What a bargain! Now's the time to save at Grace Brothers. It's so hot to have a gay time on your own. It could be that great shock and biscuit coating. It could be that smooth toffee ice cream in the center. It could be that whole delicious Golden Gay Time taste. Streets Golden Gay Time. More like a party than an ice cream. Constant BZ drenching could lead to trouble. BZ resistant worms. They'll rob your sheep of vitality, wool and meat. And maybe even kill. The solution is unique. Broad Spectrum XL Meat. It's chemically unique. It's a proven worm killer. Drench now with XL Meat. Stop worms stone dead. This year, Westpac will help more than 200,000 Australians buy their own homes. At Westpac, we're rolling our sleeves up. Hello again. Well, it was a lovely sunny day in Canberra. Conditions are expected to improve during the next few days. Those nights will still remain cold with few frost and fogs, but those southerly winds should become more easterly and then turn warmer northerlies. And now let's have a look at our synoptic chart. This high pressure is directing cool south to southeasterly airflow over southeastern Australia. This airflow is relatively stable and generally fine weather has resulted over the region. This high will drift slowly eastwards, maintaining the fine weather for the next two or three days at least. Some overnight frosts and fogs can be expected in the highland regions and winds will then turn easterlies and then more warm and northerlies. Um, over the next few days. It was fine in all the capital cities today and these were the temperatures reported in the capital cities. The highest temperature in New South Wales was 24 degrees at Narrabri and there was no rainfall in New South Wales today. And now for a look at our satellite picture. Cellular cloud over the Tasman Sea is associated with a cold southerly airflow following a front now near New Zealand. Another frontal cloud band extends from south of Tasmania to the south of Western Australia and a cloud mass over northwestern New South Wales is associated with an upper atmospheric trough. Now for a look at the local area for today. Conditions were fine and generally sunny throughout the local region. Maximum temperatures were close to the September average on the tablelands, but a couple of degrees below average along the coast. And now for tomorrow. Isolated showers overnight and morning on the Illawarra coast, but they should clear tomorrow. Some frost and fogs are expected, then a cool and mainly sunny day with southwest to southeasterly winds tending northeasterlies inland and southwest to southeasterlies on the coast tending easterlies at 10 to 15 knots. Seas will be slight with a moderate swell decreasing to low. And now for the temperatures 18 for Bega, 17 for Nowra, 12 for Cooma, 18 for Canberra, 16 for Goulburn, 16 for Wagga, and for Albury. A short time ago, the temperature was 12 degrees. Humidity was 53%. The wind was from the north at 4 kilometres per hour, and the barometric pressure was 1,025 millibars and rising. And now for the forecast for the ACT for tonight and for tomorrow, issued by the Bureau at 5.30. A cold night with areas of morning fog and then lo local frost. Then a fine mild day with light southeast to northeasterly winds. 1 to 18 are the temperature range. 5.48 is sunrise, sunset 6.02. And that's the weather. Here's Laurie. Thanks, Joe. Just running through our main stories again now. And uh, the controversy at Newport continues as the Americans announced plans to make further modifications to uh, Liberty to, before Tuesday's race. Uh, there were fears of a possible sabotage attempt on Australia too. And, of course, Parramatta takes out the Rugby League Premiership for the third year in succession. That's the news. John Bock back tomorrow night at 6. Until then.